Hello. So, you want to get into photography, or maybe you're already into photography, but you want to know what differentiates, say, this iPhone 14 Pro, this Sony RX100, and this Sony full-frame camera. Well, that's exactly what this video is about, discussing what I see as the three main types of cameras that are out there today. If that's something that you're interested in, then let's take a look. As I just mentioned, I believe there are three different types of cameras out there today. Interchangeable lens cameras, phone cameras, and point-and-shoot all-in-one cameras. Each of them carries a different set of both benefits and drawbacks. Let's start off with the one that 99% of you probably already have. A phone camera. It's undeniable that in recent years, cell phone cameras have improved a tremendous amount in a very short period of time, with companies like Apple and Samsung putting a lot of effort into putting way more features into these cameras. A couple concepts that I feel like we need to lay out for the rest of this video are sensor size and megapixels. Modern smartphone companies love using high megapixel counts to show that they have the best camera out there, only to have people actually take a look at the images that they're producing and not fall in love with them. Why? Well, that's because a megapixel is not determining the overall quality of an image, it's determining the resolution. Sensor size, on the other hand, is a much better indicator of the overall quality of an image. Having a physically larger sensor means that when a photo or video is taken, it's physically going to be able to draw in more light, resulting in a higher quality image, at least theoretically. The sensor size in the newest iPhone, the iPhone 14 Pro, is 1 over 1.28 of an inch, which is much smaller than, say, the sensor that's in this full-frame camera or even this smaller point-and-shoot. Meaning that when these cameras take the same shot, the camera with the larger sensor is going to be able to draw in more light and result in a better looking image. This is very oversimplified, mind you, but what I'm trying to lay out is that just because this iPhone has a 48 megapixel sensor, and say this camera only has a 24 megapixel sensor, you shouldn't be expecting this camera to outperform this one in every circumstance. In fact, most likely it's going to be quite the opposite. That is not to say that the images that you're going to be able to produce with the iPhone are going to be bad by any means. It really is incredible the sort of images that you're able to get from a sensor that's this small. Having that small sensor also of course results in you needing a smaller physical body which is going to make it perfect for taking places that taking a large mirrorless camera like this simply wouldn't work and it can also make it way easier for this camera to capture things like action oriented footage the iphone's camera also has another benefit that i feel like is actually the biggest one and that's simply that it's always with you what point is having a camera if you don't have it when you need it and the iPhone, arguably, or any phone camera, is going to be the one that you have with you 99% of the time. Meaning that when that special moment comes up, you're probably going to have this with you when you very well may likely not have one of these other two cameras. The area where the iPhone struggles the most is in either low light situations or in a situation where you really want subject isolation or that nice looking background blur. For both of those, whether it be low light or whether it be subject isolation, because of the incredibly small size of the sensor that's in this camera, the processing side has to do a lot more of the heavy lifting. It really does have to work some magic in this category. Another huge downside is, for the most part, phones do not offer you much in the way of manual control, meaning that it's mostly up to your phone on how the image is going to look. That's great for your average customer who doesn't want to have to understand aperture, ISO, shutter speed, just to take a picture of their kids. But for someone who's looking to get into photography as a hobby, it's a huge downside not being able to have that amount of manual control over your image and just allowing the processor to do all the work. If you have an Android, or more specifically any of the Sony line of cameras, this is most likely far less of an issue for you, as they by far give you a lot more manual control from the experiences that I've had. On the iPhone, you certainly do not get much, if any, in terms of manual control. One last thing to keep in mind with the iPhone, as I previously touched on, is that a lot of the quality that you are getting from the final images are coming from the software end of things. Now, when that goes good, you really shouldn't notice anything. But when it doesn't, you will start to see some things that are obviously out of place or were handled incorrectly. 
Because after all, if the computer is having to make all of the decisions, eventually it's going to get one wrong. The next type of camera we'll be talking about are these all-in-one point-and-shoot cameras. Now what exactly do I mean when I say all-in-one? And what differentiates it from an iPhone camera? When I say all-in-one, all I really mean is a camera with a fixed lens, meaning that you're not going to be able to replace that lens later down the line or separate it in any way. There are a lot of different cameras that fall under this category, from something like this, the Sony RX100, to say a Fujifilm X100, which is larger, all the way down to something even smaller, like a GoPro. I have this Sony RX100 because I think it is the perfect example of what makes a camera like this so attractive. Going back to sensor size for a moment, even though this camera is still quite small, it does have a larger sensor than the one that's found in an iPhone. It's a one inch sensor, even though it's technically not a full one inch, that's just how we call it, but that is what it is. Meaning that it'll be letting in a lot more light and it will even give us some natural subject isolation that the iPhone really just can't do. Combine that with the 24 to 70 millimeter f1.8 to 2.8 lens and you're getting a really capable little camera. That plays into what I think is so amazing about this type of camera when it's done right. It takes everything that is good about the iPhone in terms of the size and combines that with something of more of a traditional camera like this Sony a7, giving you a camera that you're going to be able to take pretty much anywhere and also get a little bit better image quality as well as some full manual controls out of it as well. Speaking of the manual controls, on this camera at least, the menu system and really the way the entire camera operates is the exact same as one of these larger Sony cameras, which is also a really nice benefit because if you are learning and getting into photography and this is a camera that you have to start out with, it means that once you do upgrade or choose to get more into it with a bigger camera, you're going to feel right at home and vice versa. The biggest downside for this type of camera to me is also what makes it so good. It's all in one, meaning that if you want a new focal length, buy a new camera. If your lens gets cracked, buy a new camera. If you want anything different at all, buy a new camera and carry over nothing. There's a saying in photography that I quite like, and that's that you date the camera and you marry the lens. Camera bodies are only going to last so long, maybe a decade, maybe two decades if you're lucky, but eventually they will start to break down and you'll start to have new features come out that you want as a photographer. In a more traditional camera, you're then able to purchase that new camera body keeping all of your lenses that you've invested in. So because of that, buying lenses are much more of a true investment. My friend Calvin, for instance, has recently been using a lens that's 50 years old, made in 1973, and the images that he's able to get from it are still really good. Whether a camera is made out of metal or plastic, a camera body is probably not going to last 50 years, especially when it's digital. Eventually, when something does fail, even if it's 10, 20 years from now, you gotta get rid of the whole thing. That might be silly, saying that in 10 or 20 years this camera may not work anymore, but I do think it's important to keep in mind when purchasing this camera that once it does go out, you're not gonna have anything to take over to your next system. You're just gonna have a broken piece of plastic. Or metal in this case, it's metal. The final type of camera that we'll be looking at today is an interchangeable lens system like this Sony a7 II. This camera is a full frame camera, meaning its sensor size is much bigger than the one found in the iPhone and even the one found in the Sony RX100, allowing it to capture significantly more light than either of these other cameras. Of course, every interchangeable lens camera isn't the same, and not all cameras have this larger full frame sensor. This variety of camera is where we're going to see almost all different kinds of professional cameras sit. And now that we've looked at these smaller cameras, you can probably also guess both the downsides and the upsides of this type of camera. Having that physically larger sensor, of course, is giving us a ton more light. And having the ability to swap out and customize our lenses gives us a degree of flexibility that we are not getting from either of these other cameras. The downside of having that extra degree of flexibility is cost. High quality lenses are not cheap. 
and it is very common to spend as much if not more on a single lens than the camera body itself. That can balance out when you take into account that if you take care of the lenses they are going to last you decades and decades whereas the camera body isn't going to last as long so you can take those lenses over to a new system when you do decide to upgrade later down the line. That is not to say that by any means you have to buy the biggest and most expensive lenses out there to get a decent image. There are very affordable and very good lenses out there that will not break the bank. They normally just come with some kind of a compromise to get them to that reasonable price. If you're looking to get into this kind of camera, I'll try and include a few different cameras and lenses below that you can get that will give you an excellent image for not a crazy amount of money. And one last thing to keep in mind with this type of camera is that because of that physically larger sensor, everything about the camera is physically larger. So you're probably gonna wanna buy a bag or something to carry this camera around in. So. Who are these different cameras meant for? Let's start with the iPhone. I think that the iPhone is perfect for someone who is not trying to take the best technical photo. Rather, they're simply trying to capture a memory. When you're taking a picture of someone you love, or a specific moment that means a lot to you, you're probably not going to be zooming in 200% to the image corners looking for optical flaws. The iPhone gives you a camera that is always with you. And if you're not trying to take the best technical photo, it's giving you the ability to capture those memories when you need a camera. If you're not wanting to take photos simply for the sake of taking photos, then I think the iPhone is an excellent option. If you are wanting to take photos to become a photographer or for the sake of taking the photo, then I think one of these other two cameras is a much better fit. Go with the point and shoot if you're still looking for some of those creature comforts and conveniences of the iPhone, but you're also looking to take a higher quality image and start to learn about the manual control process and exposing an image. The interchangeable lens system, on the other hand, is the route to go down if you're looking to get serious with photography, in my mind at least. Get the all-in-one camera if you are looking to make one purchase, have better image quality than the iPhone, and size really matters. Get the interchangeable lens system, whether it's a Sony, a Canon, a Fuji. Get this if beyond everything else, image quality matters to you above all. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry if I sound weird during this video. I'm sick, but wanted to still make something. So anyway, thank you for watching. God bless. Have a good day.